Hello friends! Welcome to a new Happy Learning video! Have a look at these images. Do you know what they are? Yes, of course! They're banks! What a curious name! Today, we're going to discover what banks really are, what their origin is, where they come from and why they have such an interesting name. Today, we're going to learn about the history of banks. Even though banks nowadays are very complicated and modern, the first banks were very simple, first appearing more than 4,000 years ago in places like Babylon, India and Sumer. In the beginning, banks were not companies with many workers, but were very wealthy people who lent grain to people who needed it. In the end, they lent so much grain that they were called lenders. People who lend. But how did they become so rich by lending something? Well, it's very easy because they didn't do it for free. After a while, everyone who received grain from these people had to pay them back more than they had borrowed. For example, a farmer who wanted to grow wheat would borrow four sacks of grain from somebody who had excess seed, that is, from a lender. After a while, once he had grown lots and lots of wheat, he had to pay the four bags of seeds back. Plus an extra bag. Thus, the farmer was happy because he could grow wheat. And the lender was also happy because he had received more seeds than he had lent to the farmer. He had made profit. In addition, as time went by, they started to lend many more things. They lent gold, spices, and, during the ancient Greek period, coins. Little by little, the lenders, also called usarers, had more and more money and acquired a lot of power, evolving into big companies. Companies that lent money. They had become banks. In addition to lending money, ancient banks, like today's banks, also served to store it. In ancient Greece and Rome, Banks began to be used as safe places where people kept their savings, their money. So, if they wanted to go on a trip, they could leave their wealth in a protected place so that no one could steal it. As history progressed, banks became increasingly important. During the Renaissance period, which took place in Europe between the 15th and 16th centuries, Italy became the centre of European trade, where people from many, many countries came to buy and sell things. But of course, since they all came from different places, they all used different currencies. In the city of Pisa, where the famous Leaning Tower is located, people bought and sold products with more than seven currencies. What a mess! This forced many merchants to spend hours and hours exchanging coins amongst themselves. Over the years, banks have become very large and complicated companies. Their main function remains the same as it was 4,000 years ago. On one hand, people keep their money inside banks and thus have it protected. On the other hand, banks continue to lend money, for example, to people who want to buy a house. In the future, these people will have to pay the bank back the money they have lent them and they will have to do it with interest, meaning with a little bit of extra money. If, 
for example, the bank lends you 100 coins, in the end, you have to pay back those 100 coins plus 10 extra coins. So, those 10 extra coins are called interest, of course, the interest the bank has for lending money. That's a very good name, interest. Interesting, isn't it? Understanding how banks work is very important to understand how our society and capitalism work. Did you know that the 10 biggest banks in the world have more than 25 trillion dollars? Blimey, with all that money they could buy entire countries. <gasps> well happy friends, now you know what banks are, where they come from and why they are called banks. But above all, you have already seen that learning about economics costs very little and that the best investment is education. Goodbye friends, see you next time.